welcome to this Upgrade Your Sound product showcase. My name is Kurt Witt with Music and Arts, and I'm really excited to spend some time talking about the Azumi line of flutes made by KHS. Uh, we've got some special guests joining us from KHS, uh, Dana Bell and Mike Summers. They're both here to discuss a couple of key models, share some unique insights about what makes Azumi flutes unique, and of course, uh, answer any questions that might come up during their presentation. Uh, you can see some Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen. So at any point during the session, you can post a question and somebody will be able to answer you. During this product showcase, I might have a group poll or two. I'll launch to get some feedback from the audience on some different subjects, and we can hear some discussion from our expert panelists. The Azumi lineup of flutes are incredibly popular among students and teachers and performers alike. We're going to dive in depth in a few particular models and hear from our experts, Dana and Mike, as to why Azumi is a great choice for the advancing flutist looking to upgrade to a better instrument. So welcome, Dana and Mike, and take it away. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, we have some great products to share with you. And I'd like to take you through a little bit of the history of our company. Uh, KHS America started building musical instruments in 1930, uh, bringing those to the United States in 1980. In 1980, our Jupiter line of instruments was created, which is our most uh, well-known line of wind instruments. And then uh, the Azumi flutes that we're speaking about today uh, were brought to the United States in 2005. And that was a launch uh, as a result of some wonderful, wonderful research based on our professional line of instruments, Altus flutes. Uh, we would really encourage you as you find the product that you're looking for to join us at musicarts.com or Woodwind Brasswind dot com for your purchase products and I will turn it back over to Mike Summers and Mike is our brand manager and our flute expert. Good evening everyone. Uh, first I'd like to thank Kurt for the opportunity. This is great to, to, be, a, to be able to have this captive audience and talk about the products that, um, that we work with every day and that we love to work with and uh, uh, we're, we're going to talk a lot of uh, a lot about the spe specifications, about the instruments themselves, what makes them unique, and what makes them special. And, um, and please feel free to ask any questions, and I'll do the best I can to answer them. Uh, before I get started with the actual Azumi brand, it's it's really important that we understand where Azumi came from, and. Uh, so I'll start with the Altus brand. So we're going to work from a top down. Altus is a very well known professional flute. It's handmade. It's handmade in uh, Azumino, Japan. And it's, uh, it's, it, it was founded by uh, Shuchi Tanaki, who is, um, we call him Speedy because he's just very fast. He's very fast at everything he does. He's a fast learner. He's very energetic and just uh, just a great guy. He's an artist, a musician. He's an engineer. He's he's a businessman, and uh, but most notably, he is a, a world renowned uh, flutist. And so uh, he had this concept of making a better flute. And you know, flutes have been around obviously for hundreds of years, and uh, they've had different scales. They've had the Bohm scale. They've had the Cooper scale. And so, uh, so Mr. Tanaka worked with um, William Bennett, who's a, a British flute player uh, and also a world renowned, renowned flute player and an artist. And he's a teacher. He's written books and he's taught many famous people. He's done clinics all over the world. And so they were trying to uh, really improve upon the Cooper scale and the Bohm scale, which are wonderful scales. Uh, and they, they came up with the Altus Bennett scale and it quickly became very popular. It's, uh, it's known by every flute maker out there, regardless of what scale that they use. And when I talk about the scale, it's not the scale going up and down a scale, it's the scale, the placement of the tone holes, uh, where, where they're placed uh, on, on the flute body, as well as the, the diameter and the height of the tone holes all together. So they came up with this concept. It took them years to do it. 
And so in 1981, they came up with the first, they introduced the, flirt, the, the first Altus flute and it was very popular, picked up by many people and uh, it's, it's very well respected. So whether or not a professional player uh, plays the Altus flute, they certainly recognize it for its intonation and its tone quality. Uh, so they, they, really, uh, they really worked hard to make it a permanent fixture in the world. So that being said, Altus is handmade. It's handmade in Japan. Japan has centuries of professional flute making uh, companies and abilities there. And uh, it's very expensive to make a handmade flute, especially if you're talking about a master craftsman making this flute hours and hours of, of time and, uh, and professionalism. So they thought, well, how can we make this flute similar available to someone who's not gonna spend the rest of their lives playing in a professional environment? So it, it became, uh, it, it really became a chore for them to, uh, to be able to come up with a product that would be great for advancing students and would be great for college players and, uh, and amateurs who maybe spent the rest of their career playing in a community band or a community orchestra. So it was really cool to do this. So they, uh, they came up with a concept that, that would help them speed up the process of making this uh, with uh, um, artisans overseeing other people making it. So it brought the prices down. And so that became Azumi. And that's essentially how Azumi came about. It's uh, it's, you know, when I, when, I, when I try to tell people about, you know, what's the difference between an intermediate and a professional instrument, it, it boils down to the terms of uh, quality of workmanship and materials. So where we were able to change the, uh, the Altus to Izumi is the quality of workmanship and materials. So you get the highest, highest quality with Altus and you get very, very good quality with Izumi. So uh, that's that's how I tell people that Azumi is different than Altus, and and it's a phenomenal product. I play Azumi flutes myself. Um, so what makes Azumi special uh, and sets it apart from our competition is there, there's two things. The Altus Bennett scale is the main thing because it is a scale that's once again recognized by most flute manufacturers. And the other thing that sets it apart is the, the head joint. So all of our Azumi flutes come with an Altus handmade head joint. And that's very unique in our industry because the head joint really is what sets a flute apart. You know, it, it's, it, it's, it's the mouthpiece. It's, you know, the, the flute body. It's very important with the key structure and the key height and the, the technical ability that you, that you get and the feel, but the head joint is, where your sound is produced. So we take pride in uh, recognizing that every single Altus, I mean, the Azumi flute comes with an Altus uh, handmade head joint. Um, so there's, we, we have three different types of head joints with Altus flutes. And, uh, and I'm gonna show the difference of them, try to get them on the camera here, just so you know why we chose the head joint for the Azumi flute. So, um, the, the first being the classic. If you look at the, the embouchure hole of the, the classic uh, uh, um, head joint and the lip plate, it's, it's, it's a classic head joint. It's uh, very structured, it's very um, uh, conventional and it, it, it produces a very good sound um, and it's very warm. The next one is the Z-cut. I'm gonna talk about the Z-cut. If you look at the Z-cut, you can kind of see the drop off over here. Uh, and you can also see the difference in the embouchure hole. It's uh, the, the classic embouchure hole is very rounded, kind of oval, but it's rounded on the sides and the Z-cut is kind of squared. So the Z-cut is our most popular head joint. It's the easiest head joint to produce a sound on. And it's also the, the head joint that, um, that produces a, a, the most dynamic sound. And the difference you can see, it's got the similar to the classic, it's got a similar lip plate, but the uh, embouchure hole is, is more square. So if you think about that, it's, 
it's going to be a little bit more square of a sound. It's easier to play on. It's very focused and it's very rich. If you're more of a professional player, you would notice a difference between all of the head joints. We pick the Z, the Z cut head joint to go on our, all of our Zumi flutes because of its versatility and because of its, of its ease to produce a great sound. Mike, there's really very little difference between those when you look at them side by side, but it's an enormous difference to the player, isn't it? I think people are surprised that such a small, small difference can make such a large difference, right? Absolutely. You know, and it's interesting you say that because even because these are handmade, even the differences of two classic head joints and two Z cut head joints can be a little bit different. They're still overall going to produce the same overall quality. You get you get more of a full range with a classic head joint, but you have to be uh, more of an experienced player to get it focused where you need where it needs to be because it's so round. And, you know, it's. Um, it's kind of like a tip opening on a saxophone mouthpiece, not to not to vary away, but, you know, just a little bit of a difference can make a really big difference. So, um, you know, we spent a lot of years researching, um, you know, the different types of tone of embouchure holes that you can change and how much of a little bit of a filing can change it. Uh, and the Z cut is, is by far the most popular just because of the ease of play. So most professionals will pick um, a, a classic or a classic head joint, but most students have a little bit of a trouble, a little bit trouble playing a classic head joint. It's a little bit airy sounding for them because it takes years to progress. You know, as you know, musicians know, you know, if, if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? So as you begin on a flute, it's really hard to get any sound at all. And you're running out of air quickly because your diaphragm is not strong and your mouth gets really tired. But as you learn how to get more focused with your amateur muscles, that Z, that uh, classic head joint, it becomes easier to play. And you're like, oh yeah, now I understand the differences. Uh, the V cut, um, the V cut, because of the drop off on the side, you have to direct the air straight down into the amateur hole. And it's a very bright sounding head joint. So like if I was gonna play in a, in a, uh, in a jazz band, um, where I needed to be heard over the trumpet players that are standing behind me, I would pick a Z cut head joint because it really cuts, you know, and so some people like that cutting sound all the time. Some people need it for certain, you know, for certain atmospheres. So uh, it's really neat to see those changes and to be a part of the growth of that. So it's pretty cool. Um, so we picked the Z cut to go on our, on our, uh, on all of our Altus flutes, excuse me, Azumi flutes. And, uh, and, and they're handmade there. Uh, and then, so the, the two most popular uh, flutes that we have are the, and the ones we're gonna talk about tonight are the AZ2 and the AZ3. And with those, it's a sterling silver head joint with a sterling silver lip uh, riser, which if you don't know what the riser is, it's the part that joins the lip plate to the actual head joint. And that makes a big difference. So the, the riser is sterling silver and the lip plate is sterling silver. So whereas student flutes have a, a nickel silver riser, most of them have a nickel silver head joint, uh, and then they all have a nickel silver, silver plated um, lip plate. So this is, this, is, uh, this is all sterling, 925 sterling. So, <clears throat> couple of features also that we do that, that are common in, the, in a step up flute is our, our, we put the French style arms on the keys. The key cups have French style arms. Student flutes usually have a plateau style or a, a, a Y arm style, excuse me, where the, the arm you, is not visible. So it would attach to the sides. So the advantage of the, uh, the French style arms are of course, aesthetics, but it's it really strengthens and it helps level that cup down to, to make it weighted and help it go down and on onto the tone hole very evenly, which is pretty important. And then um, let's talk about some of the features of of the well options first of all of the two of the two and the three, the the two. Um, my two here. So the, the AZ2 has a sterling silver head joint with a sterling silver uh, riser and lip plate. 
but the body of it is uh, silver plated nickel silver. So it's um, uh, very common in student and step up instruments to have a nickel plated silver, or excuse me, silver plated nickel silver body to it. But we add the French, uh, the French style arms on it. Um, and then we, we sell both of these in uh, uh, offset G and an inline G. So this is the offset G version, um, in which you can see there. And then um, this one, this, it, we also have, all of them have a, a gizmo key. You can see that on the bottom. And then the option is additional that we offer is a C-sharp trill key. Um, so we're gonna, and, and uh, uh, the other option being on a different flute, we got three going on here, is the split E mechanism. So we're gonna talk about each of those um, features. So like one quick question about the material. So you, you pointed out that the uh, one model has just a, a sterling silver head joint, the other one with the sterling silver head joint body. But I'm looking at those flutes, they look identical. From 30 feet, every flute looks the same, but there's a dramatic difference in those two materials, isn't it, for both the player and then subsequently the, the price is different. Absolutely. Yeah, so obviously um, um, silver, sterling silver is more expensive than nickel silver. Um, it's also harder to manufacture because it's softer. So it, you have to be really concise about how you uh, form the tube. Now, that being said, um, if you're a student player, you're not, you're not gonna notice the difference. And so when I, when I tell people like, well, how do I know when it's time for me to step up to a silver plated uh, or a sterling silver instrument? Well, if, if your student notices the difference in how it sounds and feels, not immediately, but after spending a few days with it, then it's time. If they don't notice a difference, then it's probably not time because what the, the sterling is gonna do because it's a softer metal, it's going to absorb more warmth. It's going to be warmer sounding. It's going to be richer sounding, and overall, the tone quality is going to be more focused and and sound much better. But if you're a student, you're really not going to notice that difference uh, because you're just struggling when trying to get a tone out of it. It does feel a little bit different as you get um, more uh, closer to your instrument and you spend more time playing it. I feel like it resonates better. So if I'm practicing on my own and I'm practicing long tones, I if I if I really focus on how I'm practicing, I can feel the difference of a sterling instrument. It's not just a sound; it's how it feels in my hands, not from a weight standpoint, just because, of, but, but for more of a reverberation. Uh, so it, it's a pretty neat feeling. It's it's almost like meditating meditating with your instrument. So um, going back to a couple of the features, all of our uh, Azumi flutes have open holes um, as opposed to closed holes. So most closed hole uh, um, flutes, if not all of them have, uh, well, excuse me, all student flutes have closed holes and all, uh, many of the professional flutes have open holes. So it's not, it's not a requirement because it's a professional flute or an intermediate flute that it has to have open holes. It's just, uh, it's just an added feature. All right, so let's get into some of the details of these. Um, so we talked a little bit about the AZ-2 and the biggest difference that, with the AZ-2 is that it's silver plated body, sterling silver head, and the AZ-3 is sterling silver all the way through. And that's when we get into the bigger features. So the AZ-2 also has the option of the, um, the split E mechanism. So uh, that's where it stops. So that's the only other addition that you can add to the, um, the AZ-2. So this, this is an AZ-3, but it has the split E mechanism on it. Uh, some people call this a high E facilitator. Uh, it's meant to have to help project that high E out because if you play your high E for all you flute players that are watching, uh, hopefully all of you are watching that are flute players, but uh, um, the high E facilitator helps to keep this key down uh, so it doesn't flutter at all when you play your high E. Uh, and this is a personal preference. It's um, it, it was added several years ago um, and, you know, not to get too much, too much into the historical uh, data about it, but it was added because some people thought that this, this uh, 
this key when you push the G, G key down that it was fluttering a little bit, causing your E to fluctuate just the frequency on that one note. It affects one note. So um, it does add a little bit of weight and it also adds some cost. So uh, if you want the confidence that your high E is always going to pop out, then uh, get, get a flute with a high E facilitator on it or split E mechanism. The other option, of course, is the C sharp trill key, and uh, also for your flute players, you know, if you play C, uh, you know, B to C sharp, it's you're having to do this, which is lifting two uh, fingers simultaneously. And sometimes, if you do it for a long period of time, you start to flutter around a little bit. So this uh, C sharp trill key allows you to just do this, and it's pretty cool. So. Disadvantages of it is uh, obviously it's a it's a another key that could possibly go out of adjustment, but uh, it's pretty popular. You know, um, once they added that a few years ago, uh, all most manufacturers added this uh, C sharp trill key, and it's it's been really popular for uh, forever. Um, the gizmo key, just another uh, key here. You can see on this, and the concept behind the, the gizmo key is. Uh, before they had a low B flute, they had a low C flute. So that was that was without this low B key on it. And um, when they added the low B foot, um, a lot of professional players thought that uh, or felt that uh, your fourth octave C would not project as well. And it was because of the extra length of this. And once again, we're talking about frequencies. You know, when you when you push a key down, you know, the the, the misnomer is that all the air comes out the bottom here. Most of the air comes out here because it's projecting this way, but it also obviously is, is uh, seeping out after you push down every single key, right? So uh, people were thinking, well, if I play this fourth octave C, how is that key affecting it? Well, it's because of the frequency traveling through the, the wavelengths, traveling through the metal and getting caught up here. And because it was such a high frequency, it was just, it was, uh, is not as clear. So it wasn't flat or sharp or anything. It was just not as clear focused sound. Not a lot of people mess around up on the IC, but some people do. And so they added this gizmo key. They felt like if they stopped that reverberation right here, then it would, it would punch out, right? So pretty cool how, how that comes about. And so, uh, so we add this on, on these flutes and that's pretty neat too. So those are the features of these flutes and the differences of them. So once again, to, to recap on that, the AZ2, uh, we offer the AZ2 in an inline and offset G, and uh, we offer it with a split E mechanism. And then with the AZ3, we offer inline offset uh, and with a split E mechanism or a C and or a C sharp, C sharp trill key. Mike, that's a really good example of, of that integration from the Altus models where the C sharp trill key splitty mechanism, very common standard on those, now down at the, the value level for the Izumi. What, what other areas of the construction of the instruments or design of the Izumi instruments take, uh, take something from the Altus models? What else could you point to there? Well, it's basically that's it. So, so the 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 head joint being the same as the Altus, uh, obviously that's that's the uh, the biggest thing, because it really makes a huge difference. And then uh, the body, um, we use very similar materials. Uh, so the the Azumi uh, flutes are the same design, different materials. We we buy them from a different vendor than we buy the Altus silver from. We only buy the most premium silver that we can buy with Altus. So, and, and the Altus, um, uh, once again, I know we're talking about Azumi, but it's really important to know that when, in, when you're talking about Altus, we offer Altus in three different types of silver. We offer it in the 925, which is sterling silver. And we offer it in the 958, which is a Britannia silver. It's not that common in our industry anymore to use Britannia silver. Uh, and then the, we also use a pure silver, which is 997 silver. And then in all of those, we, we can gold plate them. Uh, we call them gold cladding, or we can platinum clad them as well. And so, um, and we also make those Azumis in various weights, where you can get a thick, a wall thickness uh, that, that uh, is one thousandths of a millimeter difference, which it affects the tone, of course. Um, but generally speaking, we've taken the most popular 
um, 1100 series uh, Altus, and that's the tube that the Azumi has. Um, the, and, and so it's basically, uh, it's made in Taiwan instead of made in Japan. It's still, it's still regulated by professionals and it's still made by professionals, but the craftsmanship at, at Altus is these, these folks, that's all they do, that these, they hand make flutes. You know, it's not a production line thing. It's like there's, it, it's a project for them. So it's really neat. Yeah, I think that's so incredibly important for people to understand and for advancing students and teachers that you get the best of both worlds. You've got all this knowledge and skill for making the absolute premium product that can then kind of move its way down to a more, uh, you know, a better price point for most customers where it can be Kind of accepted around the world. That's a, just an incredible part of what makes uh, Azumi such a popular instrument. So I, I, I think a couple of questions, like one of the, the real common things that people ask me about is, what's the right way to try a flute? So all right, your student is ready uh, to advance, you know, to take a look at one of these Azumi models. Okay, they're ready uh, to go try this. They pick up the instrument. What What should they do? Should we be playing the most difficult thing? And if we can't play it, then we're not ready or should we be playing scales or tell, tell me a little bit about how you advise customers to go about trying a new instrument. So the first thing I, I usually ask them is, are they used to playing a, an open hole flute already or is this a new experience for them? So it, once again, the open hole, uh, ah, they all look the same, right? So um, <laughs> the open hole flute looks like this, right? And, and so if, if I'm going to go and try out a flute and I'm, and I'm getting ready to step up from my student instrument, which has closed holes, I always tell them to cover up the holes. And um, all, of the, all of the Azumi flutes, they actually are included with these um, uh, covers. So they, they, they're plugs. And um, they're basically little rubber plugs that fit in here. And so if if a student comes to me and says, I want to try a step up flute, I think I'm ready. And it can be really frustrating to pick up this flute. And let's say that you're, you're a student, you've been playing a student flute and you, tr you go to play your, your G and it's like, well, nothing's coming out. Well, you're not covering up the hole because on a closed hole flute, you don't have to cover up the hole. You just have to have your finger on the key. So they try to play it and they're like, oh, it's not working. What's wrong with me? Is something wrong with the flute? And they get really frustrated. They forget every song they've ever known. <laughs> and so, you know, if, if I say, have you ever played an open hole flute? And they say, no, and I say, great. I'll either plug the holes or I'll hand them a flute with the, uh, with the, the plugs already in them. And that really helps them identify and helps them feel because it is a different feel. You know, when you're looking at a, um, a, uh, an open hole flute, not only is the sound projecting out of the hole, but it also your finger your fingertips act, act as the tone booster. So it absorbs a lot of the reverberation and the sound that's coming through it, making your sound warmer. Uh, whereas most uh, 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 closed hole flutes, they have a plastic a pad riser, which pushes the sound back down. It, it projects the sound back more so. Um, so that's the first thing I tell them. Type of music, I always say, play something you know. What's the song that you know the best? Um, and if it's, uh, if they don't, if they can't go from there, I tell them to play long tones. And I always, well, I try any instrument with long tones, whether, you know, whether I'm in product management and I grab a horn that's just come in for a trial for, for me to look at, I don't sit there and riff all these, you know, licks all over it. I, I play long tones because I want to feel and hear how the song, the sound projects with just one note at a time. And when I talk about long tones, I'm talking about a, uh, until I run out of breath. And then I go a half step down and I do it all over again. And that's what I usually tell people to do. How does it sound to you? How does it feel to you? Don't concentrate on all of this stuff, concentrating on just how that one note sounds and then then go from there. And then I tell them to do arpeggios. So what's the scale that you know the best? D major, great, D, F sharp, A. And I tell them to start on middle D and go up as high as they can and then go down because once again, if your flute is not warmed up and not ready to play, lower notes tend to be a little bit harder to play out of the box. So just get it warmed up, play some notes that are in the middle register and just, uh, and then work your way into an, an arpeggio and then a scale. And then, you know, maybe I'll throw a piece of music in front of them and that kind of thing. So 
How long does it typically take for a student who's experiencing their first open whole flute to really get uh, the proper fingering position so that they're not having any of the leaking as they take those plugs out? That all depends on the, the habits that they've learned on their student flute. Uh, if they if they have good habits already, then um, it doesn't take any time at all. Uh, I always recommend, uh, personally, I recommend taking one out at a time. So you take the ones out it, that you're more that you're more comfortable with. So uh, you know maybe that's the F key because that's that's a home base for a lot of folks. It's your your hand doesn't pivot like this. Your hand pivots like this, but it usually stays pretty accurately uh, in position at the F key. So uh, I start with that one. If they're um, if they're already playing an offset G flute, which most flutes are offset, student flutes, um, and the, the the popularity has gained in offset professional flutes as well. It used to be uh, years ago that if you were going to play a professional flute, you're supposed to have an inline G flute. That's the first one I had. Um, but more professionals are moving back towards the offset G because it's more comfortable to play. So if you are um, if you're a student player and you're moving to an offset G key flute, then the second one I would take out is your middle finger. So the, the point is, is that you take out one plug at a time and it's based on your comfortability. If you feel like you're leaking a little bit, well, you know, you need to work just on the G key. So once you've got all three of these guys, then unplug this one and, and go from there. And it's, once again, it's long tones. It's, it's muscle memory, right? So you take that plug out and you just, you spend literally an hour working on A to G trill keys and you start long, you know, you just do long tones and you're pushing it down slowly, making sure it goes in the right place. And I recommend sometimes practicing in front of a mirror and then you're, before you know it, you're, you're done. But if you try to do it all at once, it's super frustrating. You'll spend a lot more time than if you were to spend a, a fewer amount of time practicing just one plug at a time. I can tell you're a proponent of long tones, Mike. That's a, that's really good advice. We had a, a question from the audience about um, back to the material difference about the you know the between the AZ two and the AZ three and and the difference in the sterling silver body versus the silver plate of body. What's the what does the the sound difference? What do you hear from the player? And maybe you've got the the two horns there. Maybe you can play a little bit. Uh, for us to kind of give give us your feedback of what you hear in your space and then what the parent or the teacher is likely to hear in their space. So um, if we if we talk about the AZ3 and these flutes aren't warmed up, so you probably you might not hear a, dist a difference right away. But um, once again, as, as it warms up, you know, sometimes you see a lot of professional flute players, they will stand on stage right before they get ready to play and they're holding on to it and they're really warming it up because, you know, the pitch changes and so does the tonal quality. Uh, and so, you know, we blow warm air through it. It's really focused, really rich sounding, already pretty warm. Um, my house is cold, but, uh, and then, so this is the AZ2, same head joint, sterling silver, uh, sterling silver lip plate, sterling silver riser. Of course, we're hearing these through computer speakers and it, it's, of yep. course, difficult to say, but what is your perspective in your space between those two instruments? Instantly, I notice the AZ-2 is this and the AZ-3 is this. It feels bigger coming back from me now. It's kind of cool because, and I do this often as, as well, when I practice, sometimes I practice in front of a wall, so the sound bounces back at me, but there's a ginormous difference in the focus of the sound same head joint, different body makes that big of a difference. So it's, it's, it's this versus this. Yeah, and you hear that not just in your space, but in the projection, the teacher 
across the practice room in the band room is going to notice that difference and hear that that student's tone has just blossomed with that better instrument. Yep, that's right. And, and it, it, it really works around you too, especially if you're on a stage with a wooden floor, the sound really bounces back up to you and, and, and I notice it. It's great. It's a great feeling. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that. I, another another question I, I was curious about. We don't we didn't talk about the cases that these instruments come in, but they're actually quite nice. And yeah, they are. They're really a, a beautiful part of the package. And and uh, you know, so often we focus on the instrument and the the quality of the instrument and the quality of the materials of the instrument, but the case is incredibly important, and especially with flutes, uh, also quite stylish too. Yep. So uh, they all come with this. Um, French style case, and, and it's a, it's a wooden case that uh, has a really nice velvet interior. These are silver strips that come with all of them that keep your case, uh, your instrument from tarnishing, and it's just really high quality. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it snaps together easily, and it's the little things that make the difference. You know, and for me, when I have something like this, it makes me want to practice more. <laughs> I mean, it's just. Uh, you, you you know you invest your time and your money into the things that make you a better player and then uh, what it results in is that you spending more time with that instrument and it, it almost for me it makes me want to do it justice right so those cases also come with a nice case cover it's a it's a, a, a nylon really really well stitched uh, it's got a plush interior uh, and and it fits uh, the, you know the case, the case fits snugly in it and it doesn't move around and it's just great. It's got a shoulder strap so you can carry it on your shoulder. So it's, it's a great product. Yeah, just a, just a really, really nice package. So a, a, a final question about the, the versatility of these instruments and kind of how the Azumi line can kind of take you through your middle school, high school, maybe into college if you're going to just continue playing for fun. But then if you're going to be serious about playing the flute and want to make a career out of it, then advancing to the the Altus line. Tell me a little bit more about kind of how you see, you know, where these instruments fit in versatility wise and where they can uh, travel with the player through their flute career. Sure. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of terminologies when we talk about flute players in the industry. And one of, one of the, uh, the, the most popular ways that I see this flute um, advancing is with doublers. Now, a doubler is a guy whose primary instrument is a saxophone or, or a clarinet. And as you advance as a player and you get more gigs, uh, then you know you 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 get called more if you're a doubler, right? So it's it's a known fact. And so doublers, uh, if you're a saxophone player, you don't want to spend you know ten thousand dollars on a flute because that's not your primary instrument. You might not notice the difference of that, or you're not going to play it enough to where it's going to make that big a difference. Maybe you're playing on a cruise ship or you're playing at, at, a, at a theme park somewhere. And so you're, call, you're called on to play flute every once in a while. You want a great instrument that's reliable, that's not gonna fall apart, that sounds great, and that is perceived as a very good instrument. This is where Azumi really fits in really well. Also, it fits in well with someone who maybe uh, is thinking about becoming an educator, a band director, and isn't gonna be a professional flute player with the Boston Symphony. So they, don't, they can't justify spending, unless you have the money, spending the money on on an Altus flute or you know uh, one of the other brands so this is a perfect you know like I am a flute player but I am not the professional flute player I'm not aiming to practice seven hours a day anymore when I graduate from college this Azumi is a perfect flute for that because you're still a very good flute player and really you've if you've made money at it you're a professional flute player so it, it's perfect and you'll never have to own another flute ever. It's, you know, the, the technology that they have today uh, and the materials that they're using and the, 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 uh, the abilities they have to construct these is way better than the flutes that were made 40 years ago, you know, so you could have bought the best flute 40 years ago and this flute is just as good or maybe a little bit better than that because of the advances and advancements in technology. Uh, so, it, you know, that's where I see it, you know, and it's also you know, a high school player who's looking to be an Allstate, this is a great flute for them. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, it's fantastic. Yeah, no doubt for the, the adult hobbyist, you can continue playing that in flute choirs, have a beautiful, big, rich sound, 
um, you know, at a compelling price point. That's a, a great testimony um, you know, to the, the design concept of these instruments and taking and integrating uh, the, the Altus uh, knowledge and know-how for how to make great flutes into a product uh, that's affordable for uh, kind of for the average everyday player. So kudos uh, to you guys. Uh, I'd like to thank Dana and Mike. Thank you guys for joining this product showcase about Azumi flutes. I think everybody will agree these are these are absolutely phenomenal instruments among the top flutes in the market today. Uh, and it's no wonder that these are an excellent choice for advancing players uh, at all ranges, whether you're that that uh, advancing middle school student, high school student, or the adult hobbyist who's looking to get back into playing flutes. During this Upgrade Your Sound uh, showcase, we've got a couple special offers available, uh, including 48-month uh, financing. Uh, we've historically uh, not offered 48-month financing. There we go. And we've got that running through the rest of the year. Uh, so that Azumi flute can now be just uh, just dollars and cents per month, uh, financing that with no interest over the course of 48 months. So great opportunity. You can learn more about that special financing uh, at your local music and arts store, or uh, you can uh, see, get that financing online uh, through Woodwind and Brasswind. Uh, you'll get some follow-up email after this uh, session with more details about uh, how to go about that. Uh, you can choose financing, or we also have a special offer of 15 percent off instrument $75 or more. Uh, that'll run through the end of the year. Uh, you can again learn more about that at your local music and arts store or online at music and arts or Wilbur and Brasswood. Uh, if you have more questions, this showcase extends in store through the weekend. You can visit your local store, speak with an instrument expert, learn more about these great Azumi flutes, uh, learn about the lessons we offer, the repair, uh, to get your flute back up into working condition. Uh, lots of great stuff to see at Music and Arts. So I'd like to thank you again, uh, Mike and Dana, for joining this showcase about Azumi Flutes and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you.